Blessed is the kingdom of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Christ is risen from the dead by death trampling down upon death and to those in the tombs he has granted life Christos Anesti In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of God and the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For peace in the whole world, for the stability of the holy churches of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house and for those who enter it with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our Archbishop and Father, Savas, the Honorable Presbyters, the Deacons in Christ, and all the clergy and laity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for our country, the President, and all those in public service, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this parish and city, for every city and country, and for the faithful who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For favorable weather and abundance of the fruits of the earth and temperate seasons, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for travelers by land, sea, and air, for the sick, the suffering, the captives, and for their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and distress, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another in our whole life to Christ our God. Lord our God, whose power is beyond compare and glory is beyond understanding, whose mercy is boundless and love for us is ineffable, look upon us and upon this holy house in your compassion. Grant to us and to those who pray with us your abundant mercy. For to you belong all glory, honor, and worship to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Thou to God all the earth, through the intercession of the Theotokos, and your Savior. Sing now to his name, give glory to his praise. Says the sea. God, how fearful are your works. Through the intercession of the Theotokos, Savior, 
In peace, let us again pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Amen. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and the ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. For yours is the dominion, the kingdom, the power, and the glory of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, into the ages of ages. Amen. Lord, our God, save your people and bless your inheritance. May the whole God body, be gracious to us and bless us. Glorify the Lord, then by your divine power, and do not forsake us. to grant the request for two or three gathered in your name. Help them also the petition of your servants for our benefit. Give us the knowledge of your truth in this world. That we may know his way on the earth, your salvation among all the Gentiles. Save us, the Son of God, In peace, let us again pray to the Lord. Lord Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Amen. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. For you are a good and loving God, and to you we give glory to the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages.
Christ is the entrance of your saints, always now and ever into the ages of ages. Amen. Wisdom arise in churches. Bless God the Lord from the fount of Israel. the hymn of our church. Let us pray to the Lord. For you are holy, our God, and to you we give glory, to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and forever into the ages of ages. Amen. Holy God, you dwell among your saints. You are praised by the servant of the Christ, holy heaven, and glorified by the cherubim and worshiped by all the heavenly powers. You have brought all things out of nothing into being. You have created man and woman in your image and likeness and adorned them with all the gifts of your grace. We give wisdom and understanding and do the supplicant and do, do not overlook the sinner, but have a and that which repents as the way of salvation. You have enabled us, your lowly and unworthy servants, to stand at this hour before the Lord of your holy altar and to offer you to worship and praise. Master, accept through 
Christ, holy him also from all of us sinners and business and goodness. Forgive our voluntary and voluntary transgressions. Sanctify our souls and lives and grant that we may worship and serve the corners of the days of our lives by the intercessions of the Holy Theotokos and Lord of the Saints of Jesus throughout the ages. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal, have mercy on us. I give so thanks, I give so thanks, I give so thanks. Let us be attentive. Save me, O Lord, for the holy man has ceased. Wisdom. The reading is from, from the Acts of the Apostles. Let us be attentive. In those days, as we apostles were going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners much gain by soothsaying. She followed Paul and us, crying, These men are servants of the Most High God, who proclaim to you the way of salvation. And this she did for many days. But Paul was annoyed and turned and said to the Spirit, I charge you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of gain was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace for the rulers. And when they had brought them to the magistrates, they said, These men are Jews, and they are disturbing our city. They advocate customs which... It is not lawful for us Romans to accept their practice. The crowd joined in attacking them, and the magistrates tore the garments off of them and gave orders to beat them with rods. And when they had inflicted many blows upon them, they threw them into prison, charging the jailer to keep them safely. Having received this charge, he put them into the inner prison and fastened their feet in the stocks. About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's fetters were unfastened. When the jailer awoke and saw that the prison doors were open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself, supposing that the prisoners had escaped. But Paul cried with a loud voice, Do not harm yourself, for we are all here. And he called for light and rushed in, and trembling with fear, he fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Men, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. And he spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their wounds, and he was baptized at once with all his family. Then he brought them up to his house and set food before them, and he rejoiced with all his household that he had believed in God. Peace be to you, the reader. <laughs> Wisdom arise, let us hear the Holy Gospel. Peace be with all. And with your spirit. The reading is from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Let us be attentive. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you. 
At that time, as Jesus passed by, he saw a man blind from his birth. And his disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, It was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that the works of God might be made manifest in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night comes when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. As he said this, he spat on the ground and made clay of the spittle and anointed the man's eyes with the clay, saying to him, Go, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar said, Is not this the man who used to sit and beg? Some said, It is he. Others said, No, but he is like him. He said, I am the man. They said to him, Then how were your eyes opened? He answered, The man called Jesus made clay and anointed my eyes and said to me, Go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, Where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the clay and opened his eyes. The Pharisees again asked him how he had received his sight, and he said to them, He put clay on my eyes, and I washed, and I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others said, How can a man who is a sinner do such signs? There was a division among them. So they again said to the blind man, What do you say about him, since he has opened your eyes? He said, He is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, Is this your son, who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, We know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but how he now sees we do not know, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he will speak for himself. His parents said this because they feared the Jews, for the Jews had already agreed that if anyone should confess him to be the Christ, he was to be put out of the synagogue. Therefore his parents said, He's of age, ask him. So for the second time they called the man who had been blind and said to him, Give God the praise. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, Whether he is a sinner I do not know. One thing I know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, What did he say to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you too want to become his disciples? And they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Why, this is a marvel. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but if anyone is a worshiper of God and does his will, God listens to him. Never since the world began has it been that heard that anyone opened the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, You were born in utter sin, and you would teach us? And they cast him out. Jesus heard that they had cast him out, and having found him, he said, Do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, And who is he, sir, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have seen him, and it is he who speaks to you. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshipped him. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat>
Today, let us talk about food. I was also very tempted of talking to you about coffee, but then you would have known most of what goes on in my mind. So we'll leave the coffee part for another time. Today, let's talk about food. And we'll talk about food in the Bible, as well as food in our lives and how it is meant to, be, to bring us closer to God if consumed properly. What inspired me is, was that uh, at the last Bible study, we were discussing somehow, I don't know how we got to ask the question, what is the best food in the world? You already know? Let's see, I'm really curious. What do you think the best food in the world is? Chick-fil-A, or any specific one. The spicy chicken sandwich, all right. We were thinking of a different, a different road, but similar to that. We thought that the best food in the, not we, some of us, some of us thought that the best food in the world is warm bread right out of the oven. That's what some of us thought. Back here, I, I started talking about food and my mind already goes, warm bread right out of the oven. And then one of the members of our Bible study pointed out that this is the oldest cooked food mentioned in the Bible. So I checked, and indeed, after Adam and Eve have sinned, God tells Adam that by the sweat of his face he would eat his bread. So that was the first cooked food that was mentioned in the Bible. Another member of our group noticed that Adam must have known what bread is. In other words, there was bread in the Garden of Paradise. Now, this is not the first time that food is mentioned in the Bible, even though this is so early, isn't it? Because first God says that he made all the plants and the trees, and those are going to be food for Adam and Eve. In other words, Adam and Eve were vegetarians, or maybe we could even say vegans. We don't know that for a fact, but they were definitely vegetarians. They did not eat uh, meat at that time. It should not surprise us. A few months ago, I was talking to somebody who grew up in Greece, an elderly gentleman, and as we were talking, I was really curious about, for example, what did they do with eggs during Lent? Like if people fasted, what did they do with eggs? And he told me that really their diet traditionally was so much plant-based that when Lent came, really there wasn't much of a change in their diet. And just a few weeks ago, I was in Nigeria, and I stayed there for a whole week, and I went into a more rural part of Nigeria. I ate their food, and I will tell you that once maybe I had just a little bit of chicken because we are guests and they treated us differently, maybe a little bit of fish, but no, I, most of the times it was just plant-based. And that's almost exclusively what societies in ancient times would, uh, used to eat. Reflecting that in the Bible, the permission to eat meat comes only later. After the flood, God basically gives up on humanity and says they are always going to be violent. And so God makes a concession to violence, and for the first time, human beings, after the flood, again, were allowed to eat meat. But even then, God put some limits about how to eat that meat. Those limits are going to become extremely important in the Jewish tradition, and many more will be added. Limits such as, what are you supposed to eat during certain feast days? So, for example, you all know that in the Jewish tradition for Passover, they ate what kind of meat? Lamb, very good. And what kind of bread? Unleavened, yes. Um, they were also told what kind of foods not to eat. So, for example, pork is considered unclean. And when Jesus came, food appears surprisingly often in the Bible. Even when people are fasting, like St. John the Baptist, we know what he's eating, white logusts and honey. 
And then Jesus is in the wilderness with the people and he multiplies the loaves of bread and the fish, showing that he came to feed those who were poor. At the Last Supper, he instituted the Eucharist in which he tells us, take, eat. And to this day, in commemoration of that, we are eating the body of Christ. Moreover, when he taught us how to pray, he told us that we should ask for our daily bread. Give us today our daily bread. I'm going to come back in just a few seconds about that because it says daily bread, meaning for one day, right? But after the resurrection, we also see Jesus eating again. Some of the disciples were not exactly sure that they saw really Jesus. And so he says, do you have anything to eat? And he ate before them, which is something to contemplate about our own resurrected bodies that they will be able to take food. And so in all of these, we see in the Bible how food is a gift from God. And this is why every time people eat in the Bible, they say a prayer and they give thanks to God for the gift of the food. And also this is how they bless the food. And so every time we eat, let us say a prayer. I know it sounds like something very basic, isn't it? But let us always say a prayer when we eat, because pr food is a gift from God that is supposed to bring us closer to Him. And when we pray for food, let us also remember that it is the gift that God gives us for sustenance, and it is an element of joy. Think of those best family meals that you have eaten together with your loved ones and how much joy you feel around the table. So do not be surprised that when Jesus spoke about the kingdom of God, oftentimes he referred to the kingdom of God as a banquet. Do you remember like the wedding banquet, for example, right? And other times he would say, even completely out of the blue, that many people will come from the east and from the west. They will sit down with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom and eat. That's how Jesus described the kingdom of God. We as Orthodox Christians coming to Holy Trinity Greek Orthodox Church should not be surprised because every time you enter, you see that big icon right above me with the hospitality of Abraham and Sarah. And do you see how Abraham and Sarah are bringing the food to the three strangers? Who are the three strangers? God. The Trinity. So there is God, the Trinity, eating as Abraham and Sarah show them hospitality here at Holy Trinity. This is very, very much front and center for us, right? How food is bringing us closer to God it's a sign of God's presence, and it brings us happiness. Now, having spoken a little bit about the Bible, let us see how food can also relate with us today. Are we still in that same kind of mindset? Unfortunately, that is not always the case, and unfortunately, we must make an effort in order to eat food right the way God intended it. And so I will share with you a few thoughts by an Orthodox scholar, Dr. Chris Durante, who recently observed that we need to reassess our global society's food cultivation and distribution practices, as well as humanity's current consumption habits. Our attempts to live the so-called good life right, by pursuing a vision of so-called prosperity of abundance has given rise to an industrial agriculture that in fact failed to truly achieve a state of flourishing for us as a global community. Many of our brothers and sisters go hungry because they lack food, while many of us waste food and throw it away. And so in the process, we have forgotten that our responsibility to care for creation and oftentimes we have done harm to the environment. Dr. Durante says that we need an authentic repentance, a reorientation of the mind, as the Greek word metania suggests, which entails the transformation of our personal lifestyles, what we consume, the way we consume it, 
as well as the method and location of our food sourcing. So he talks about the ethics of food. He remembers that in the old time, agriculture was a profession that Saint Basil the Great, an important saint of our church, considered to be the noblest of all. Saint Basil writes that agriculture is the best since of its nature it provides the necessities of life. And while it is true that agriculture provides humanity with the necessities of life, sadly, much of our current agriculture has become unsustainable and harmful to our natural environment. With its use of heavy machinery, industrial agriculture is one of the largest producers of carbon emissions, far exceeding even automotive e emissions. And with its reliance on chemical fertilizer, it is an industry that is causing a lot of problems. These problems include, for example, groundwater pollution. These problems include chemicals found inside our bodies. You understand? Because of the kind of food we eat, our bodies have chemicals that are not supposed to be in there. Often, other times, it, uh, uh, it results in deterioration of soil, especially due to lack of crop diversity. And sometimes, large, pop, uh, large parts of our planet that used to be forests are now desert. That is happening while many of us waste a lot of food because it is industrially produced, is very cheap, and thus somehow less valued, less personal, while many in our society and around the world suffer for hunger. We kind of lost the connection to food. And especially many of our young people believe that the chicken that they're eating really grows in plastic, a giant eagle. <laughs> but it's not. <laughs> it's actually an animal. And that animal has to be raised properly, right? And so it's important to think again of the prayer, give us this day our daily bread, because some fathers of our church interpret this text, daily bread, to mean that we are praying for the food that we need today, that we do not worry about tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. And so when we look at our fridge, how much food is in there? How much of it are we going to throw away? And if the answer is a lot, then that's not right, because we are being wasteful. And that is possible because of that lack of connection, lack of understanding of where food comes from. It's an industrial, impersonal, valueless, without value uh, type of exercise. So we're learning here not to waste, and we're also learning that we could choose the kind of food that we're buying, some of it that is raised differently, especially animal products. But also think of fruit. Do we ever stop and ponder what is the impact of the fruit that we're eating if it has been produced in California? Did you ever drive from here to California? Did anybody here drive from here to California? No. Do you see? <laughs> There's a good reason. It's really far. But our food drives from California to here very, very often. So the impact has to be something we take into account. Having said this, let us acknowledge the food that is industrially raised is way cheaper than the food that is organic, locally grown, justly produced. And so this may be a rich man's problem, what kind of food am I eating? And that's not how I mean it here. Because it's not about being insensitive to those who do not have a choice. Like we said, we are a society of extremes where some waste while others do not have enough food. So we're trying to find a balance here. And that balance might come from older agricultural societies. Let's remember again that St. Basil the Great considers agriculture to be the noblest of all occupations. Well, sometimes you look at some orthodox monastic communities and you understand why that is the case. So I would like to share with you a few examples that are truly inspiring. There is a monastery in Greece. 
Anatoly Larisal were the nuns of the Hermitage of St. Paul since 1986 have made a conscious decision to grow food naturally, to sell it locally, to get their resources from the local economy, and thus make their local society more sustainable and more independent. Similarly, in the United States, there are two monasteries of New Skeet in Cambridge, New York, in which they too are engaging in good agricultural practices. Actually, some of them are breeding uh, dogs, and they do that in a sustainable way. It's not like a puppet mill. There is also the example of the Old Saints Greek Orthodox Monastery in Calverton, New York. This is a nuns, Greek nuns, who have been moved by human trafficking. And they have been so moved by human trafficking that they decided that in their monastery, they are going to employ victims of human trafficking to create products that are morally raised and then that are deployed, that are sold in a sustainable way. These, nun, uh, these nuns are then donating all the profits from that specific project to uh, survivors of human trafficking. Furthermore, the Greek Archdiocese, those of uh, you might know, has representatives of the United Nations. And there, the Greek Archdiocese partners with NGOs from all over the world in order to support sustainable practices. And that is primarily because our own patriarch of Constantinople, did you know that he is nicknamed the Green Patriarch? He is nicknamed the Green Patriarch because of his concern for, uh, uh, for creation. Recently, the Greek Archdiocese has implemented a program called the uh, Greening of the Orthodox Parish Initiative. And here at Holy Trinity Greek Orthodox Church, we had a member attend a workshop of this Greening Initiative. And did you notice the significant reduction, if not elimination, of foam plates? Yes. In our hospitality hour, in our um, uh, festival, because of such initiatives, we have made the conscious decision of having less of an environmental impact in the way in which we serve and we consume food, which is exactly what we talked about today. And so in conclusion, as we reflect upon food, we are first to understand that it is God's gift that brings us together. And because it is God's gift that brings us together and that is supposed to bring us joy, we as Orthodox Christians, we have the duty to cultivate good food habits. We have also the opportunity to develop sustainable methods of food cultivation, distribution, and consumption. The positive impact for the environment could potentially be enormous, as Dr. Chris Durante was observed. And in this endeavor, we are not alone because God is on our side. We have seen in the Bible how God gave us the plants of the earth, the trees, and the animals for use and not for abuse, for consumption while giving thanks to God, and not as an automatic industrial and heartless process. As many of us waste a lot of food because it is industrially processed, very cheap, and thus less valued. Many in our society and around the world are suffering from hunger, and this is not right. Some have much more than the daily bread, while others do not have their daily bread. So let us change our mindset to rectify this wrong while praying, give us this day our daily bread. Amen. And grant that all is guarded by your power and may give glory to you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 
now and forever into the ages of ages. Known bound by world desires and places worthy to approach, draw near or minister to you, the King of glory, to serve his great and awesome even for the heavenly powers. But because of your ineffable and measurable love for us, you became man without alteration or change. You have served as our high priest and as Lord of all in heaven. Trust to us the celebration of this liturgical sacrifice without the shedding of blood. For your Lord, Lord our God, rule over all things in heaven and on earth. You are seated on the throne of the cherubim of the Lord, the seraphim, the King of Israel. You alone are holy and dwell among your saints. You alone are good and dread to hear. Therefore, I implore you, look upon me, your sinful and unworthy servant, and cleanse my soul and heart from evil consciousness. Enable me by the power of your Holy Spirit, so that, vested with the grace of priesthood, I may stand before your holy table and celebrate the mystery of your holy and pure body and your precious blood. To I come with bowed head and pray, do not turn your face away from me, nor reject me from among your children, but make me your sinful and unworthy servant, worthy to offer to you these gifts. For you, Christ our God, are the offering, and the offering the one who receives and is distributed, and to you we give glory, together with your eternal Father and your own holy, good, and life-giving Spirit, now and forever into the ages of ages. Amen. We who mystically represent the cherubim, send the thrice holy hymn to the life-giving trend, and let us set aside all the cares of this life, that we receive the King of all in this place, called by the angel and host. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. We who mystically represent the cherubim, send the thrice holy hymn to the life-giving trend, and let us set aside all the cares of this life, that may see the King of all His bliss glorified by the angelic host. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. We who mystically represent the cherubim and the thrice holy hymn to the life giving tree, to let us set aside all the cares of this life. That may see the King of all His bliss glorified by the angelic host. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. And for those who hate us, may the Lord have mercy on us. Thank 
καίς τους αιώνας των αιώνων. May the Lord our God remember all of us in His kingdom, always, now and forever, and unto the ages of Let us complete our prayer to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the precious gifts here presented, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy house and for those who enter it with faith, reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and distress, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Amen. For a perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless day, let us ask the Lord. For an angel of peace, a faithful guide, the guardian of our souls and bodies, let us ask the Lord. For forgiveness and remission of our sins and transgressions, let us ask the Lord. For all that is good and beneficial to our souls and for peace in the world, let us ask the Lord. For the completion of our lives in peace and repentance, let us ask the Lord. For a Christian and to our lives, peaceful without shame and suffering, and for a good account before the awesome judgment seat of Christ, let us ask the Lord. Remembering our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary with all the saints, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. Lord God Almighty, you alone are holy. You accept the sacrifice of praise from those who call upon you with their whole heart. Receive also the prayer of us sinners and let it reach your holy altar. Enable us to bring before you gifts and spiritual sacrifice for our sins and for the transgressions of the people. Make us worthy to find grace in your prayers so that our sacrifice may be pleasing to you and that your good and gracious spirit may abide with us with the gifts here presented and with all your people. Through the mercies of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed together with your all holy, good and life-giving spirit, now and forever into the ages of ages. Peace be with all. And with your spirit. Let us love one another that with one mind we may confess.
The door is the door is in wisdom. Let us be attentive. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages. Light of light, true God of true God, begotten, not created, of one essence with the Father, through whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became man. He was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate and suffered and was buried, and he rose on the third day according to the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge the living and the dead. His kingdom shall have no end. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the creator of life, who proceeds from the Father, who together with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who spoke through the prophets, in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the ages to come. Amen. Let us stand well, let us stand in all, let us be attentive, that we may present the holy offering in peace. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Let us lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord. It is proper and right. It is proper and right to sing to you, bless you, praise you, thank you, and worship you in all places of your dominion. For you are God ineffable beyond comprehension, invisible beyond understanding, existing forever and always the same. You and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit, you brought us into being out of nothing, and when we fell, you raised us up again. You did not cease doing everything until you led us to heaven and granted us your kingdom to come. For all these things we thank you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit. For all things that we know and do not know, for blessings seen and unseen that have been bestowed upon us. We also thank you for this liturgy which we are pleased to accept from our hands, even though you are surrounded by thousands of archangels, tens of thousands of angels, by the cherubim, seraphim, six-winged, many-eyed, soaring with their wings. Singing the victory hymn, proclaiming, crying out, and saying... Together with these blessed powers, merciful Master, we also proclaim and say, You are holy and most holy, you and your only begotten Son and your Holy Spirit. You are holy and most holy, and sublime is your glory. You so loved your world that you gave your only begotten Son, so that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. He came and fulfilled the divine plan for us on the night when he was delivered up, or rather when he gave himself us for the life of the world. He took breath in his holy, pure, and blameless hands, Give thanks, bless, sanctify, broke, and gave it to his old disciples and apostles, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you, for the forgiveness of sins. Likewise, after the supper, he took the cup, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Amen. 
remembering therefore this command of the Savior and all that came to pass for our sake, the cross, the tomb, the resurrection on the third day, the ascension to heaven, the enthronement at the right hand of the Father, and the second glorious coming. We offer to you these gifts from your own gifts in all and for all. Once again, we offer to you the spiritual worship without the shedding of blood, and we ask, pray, and entreat you. Send down your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts here presented, and make this bread the precious body of your Christ. And that which is in this cup, the precious blood of your Christ. Amen. Changing them by your Holy Spirit. Amen. So that they may be to those who partake of them for vigilance of soul, forgiveness of sins, communion of your Holy Spirit, fulfillment of the kingdom of heaven, confidence before you and not in judgment or condemnation. Again, we offer this spiritual worship for those who repose in the faith. Forefathers, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, ascetics, and for your righteous bread. Especially for our most holy, pure, blessed, and glorious Lady, the Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary. For Saint John the Prophet, for Anna Baptist of the Holy and Glorious and Most Honorable Apostles, for Saints Andrew, the new martyr of Argentus, Simon of Smyrna, seven new martyrs of Castonia, Theodosia, of Constantinople, Theodosia of Tyre, those together with them. Above all, remember, Lord, our Archbishop and Father Savas, grant that he may serve your holy churches in peace, keep him safe, honorable, and healthy for many years, rightly teaching the word of your truth. Remember also, Lord, those whom each of us calls to mind, and all your people. And all your people. And grant that with one voice and one heart we may glorify and praise your most honored and majestic name, of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. The mercy of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ, be with all of you. And with your spirit. Having remembered all the saints, let us again in peace praise to the Lord. For the precious gifts offered and consecrated, let us pray to the Lord. Lord that our loving God, who has received them at His holy, heavenly, and spiritual altar as an offering of spiritual fragrance, may return send upon us divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Lord, Having prayed for the unity of the faith and for the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. You, o Lord. 
We entrust to you, loving Master, our whole life and hope, and we ask, pray, and entreat. Make us worthy to partake of your heavenly and awesome mysteries from this holy and spiritual table with a clear conscience for the remission of sins, forgiveness of transgressions, communion of the Holy Spirit, inheritance of the kingdom of heaven, confidence before you, not in judgment or condemnation. And make us worthy, Master, with confidence and without fear of condemnation to dare call you the heavenly God, Father, and to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Pater imon, mentis uranis, agresito to nomasu, Κενηθείτο το θέλημά σου, ω εν ουρανών και επί τη γη, των άρτων ημών των επιούσιων, δώσει μην σήμερον και άφεση μην τα οφειλήματα ημών, ω και η μη σαφή μεν τη φελέπτη ημών, και μη σε ενέγεση μα τη πειρασμών, αλλά ρίσε η μα από του πονηρού. Ότι σου εστίνει η βασιλεία και η δύναμη και η δόξα του πατρό και του ιού και του αγίου πνεύματο, νυν και αή και ει του αιώνα των αιώνων. Κυρίνη πάση, τα σκεφαλά σημών το κυρίο κλείνω με. We give thanks to you, invisible King, by your infinite power you created all things, and by your great mercy you brought everything from nothing into being. Master, look down from heaven upon those who have bowed their heads before you. They have bowed not before flesh and blood, but before you, the awesome God. Therefore, Master, guide the course of our life for the benefit according to the need of each of us. Sail with those who sail, travel with those who travel, and heal the sick physician of our souls and bodies. By the grace, mercy, and love for us of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed, together with your all holy, good, and life-giving Spirit, now and forever into the ages of ages. Lord Jesus Christ, our God, hear us from your holy dwelling place and from the glorious throne of your kingdom. You are enthroned on high with the Father and also invisibly present among us. Come and sanctify us and let your pure body and precious blood be given to us by your mighty hand and through us to all your people. Let us be attentive, the holy gift for the holy people of God. I believe and confess, Lord, that you are truly the Christ, the Son of the living God, who came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the first. I also believe that this is truly your pure body, and that this is truly your precious blood. Therefore, I pray to you, have mercy upon me, and forgive my transgressions, voluntary and involuntary, in word and deed, known and unknown, and make me unworthy without condemnation, to partake of your pure mysteries for the forgiveness of sins and for the life eternal. Amen. How shall I, who am unworthy, enter in the splendor of your saints? If I dare to enter in the bridal chamber, my clothing will accuse me, since it is not a wedding garment. And being bound up, I shall be cast out by the angels. In your love, Lord, cleanse my soul and save me. Let these holy gifts be nation because of my unworthiness, but for the cleansing and sanctification of soul and body and the pledge of the future life and kingdom. It is good for me to cling to God and to place in him the hope of my salvation. 
Receive me today, Son of God, as a partaker of your mystical supper. I will not reveal your mystery to your adversaries, nor will I give you a kiss as to Judas. But as a thief, I confess to you, Lord, remember me in your kingdom. Behold, I approach Christ, our mortal King God. Please forgive me, the unworthy priest and sinner. With the fear of God, with faith and love, draw near.
O God, save your people and bless your inheritance. now and forever into the ages of ages. Amen. Let us be attentive, having partaken of the divine, holy, pure, immortal, heavenly, life-giving and awesome mysteries of Christ. Let us worthily give thanks to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and protect us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Having prayed for a perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless day, let us commit ourselves and one another and our whole life to Christ our God. We thank you, loving Master, benefactor of our souls, that on this day you have made us worthy once again of your heavenly and immortal mysteries. Direct our ways in the right path. Establish us firmly in your fear. God our lives and make our endeavor safe through the prayers and supplications of the glorious Theotokos and ever Virgin Mary and of all the saints. For you are our sanctification, and to you we give glory to the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Let us depart in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Father, give the blessing. Lord, bless those who praise you and sanctify those who trust in you. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Protect the whole body of your church. Sanctify those who love the beauty of your house. Glorify them in return by your divine power, and do not forsake us who hope in you. Grant peace to your world, to your churches, to the clergy, to those in public service, to the armed forces, and to all your people. For every good and perfect gift is from above, coming from you, the Father of lights. To you we give glory, thanksgiving, and worship. To the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Christ our God, you are the fulfillment of the one prophet. We have for this position of the Father. For our hearts to join the plan as well as now and ever into the ages of ages. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. May the blessing of the Lord and His mercy come upon you through His divine grace and love, always, now, and ever, into the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to your hope, glory to you. May Christ, our true God, who rose from the dead, as good, loving, and merciful God, have mercy upon us and save us through the intercessions of His most pure and holy Mother the power of the precious and life-giving cross, the protection of the honorable bodiless powers of heaven, the supplications of the honorable glorious prophet and for Aunt John the Baptist, the holy glorious and praiseworthy apostles, the holy glorious and triumphant martyrs, our holy God-bearing fathers of the holy righteous ancestors of God Joachim and Anna, of Saint Andrew the new martyr and those together with him whose memory is celebrated today and of all the saints. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christos Anesti. Christos Voskresni. Oisin of us, Christ. Al Masia, come. Al come, come. Christ is risen from the dead. By death.
trampling down upon death and to those in the tombs he has granted life. Christ is risen from the dead by death, trampling down death and to those in the tombs he has granted life. Truly the Lord has risen bless all of you. Please be seated. Thank you very much for your generosity in supporting our ministries as we pass the trays. I would like to welcome Mrs. Lamis Turk, um, who is a guest in our parish. Where is she? came earlier. Um, thank you for visiting with us. And also, we want to welcome Father Peter Orfanakos with us. He uh, prayed with us. He helped distribute communion. He's here for a family event. Thank you very much, Father Peter, for being with us. Uh, today's hospitality hour is uh, hosted by the Holy Trinity Festival cooking team. So we are probably in for some good food. According to the uh, uh, sermon, that's supposed to be an occasion for joy. I cannot wait. And then um, uh, today we have the service for the uh, Ascension on Thursday, and that will be at the St. George Chapel. And tomorrow at 10 a.m. we have the um, uh, service, the memorial service for the veterans. But now I would like to uh, see if maybe Mr. Dean Pasadellis could come and uh, make an announcement about the golf outing. I can give you a microphone. Hello, good morning. So um, on next Monday, the 6th, we're having our annual golf outing, which is always a lot of fun. Um, you may recall seeing in the bulletin uh, or in the uh, Herald, and then also in the, uh, the window for the church office, the flyer for that event. So if you, if you have an opportunity, we have a couple foursomes that we'd still like to fill. Um, and also we have the opportunity this year to have uh, people participate by coming to dinner or supporting the event even if they're not golfers. Um, if you need a copy of this, uh, it is still at the, uh, at the window at the office where Mary sits. Um, it's also listed with my contact information in today's bulletin and it was in the Herald too. So um, we're getting our last push here. We could use a few more foursomes. Um, and if you'd like to play, if you'd like to play and build a foursome, if you can only play on your own, I can build you in with another team. If you have a full team that you'd like to play, then great, we'd register another team. So we'd appreciate any opportunity to have you come. It's dinner, uh, it's lunch, it's uh, fun games during the day that people can participate in. There's putting competitions, a hole-in-one competition, and then, of course, 18 holes of golf. So it's all there if you need it. We'd love to have you there, and we really are working to make this successful. So everyone's participation and, and sponsorship would be great. Thank you. Good morning to all. Whoops. Grab my microphone. Good morning to all of you. Uh, we did indeed have three priests today, although one serving, and I thank Father Radu for carrying the entire service by himself this morning. Father Peter, my brother-in-law, who we welcome back again, uh, and I did not serve this morning for some varying voice reasons, and, uh, and thank you, Father Radu, for giving us the break to do that. But I did want to come out, and we both wanted to come out today to be able to join with, with you in offering prayers we have all been so traumatically and tragically affected by the news of yet another sad, not only mass shooting, but a school shooting down in Uvalde, Texas. And also there was the one in Buffalo at the grocery store recently. Um, <clears throat> times like this, we cry out with questions. Of course, there's always the why, but there are many times that it's a where. Where are our laws? Where are our politicians? Where is the president? Where are the authorities? Where are the police? 
But when you get to the question, where is the church? The church is here. And when you start to ask the what, what should this do and what should that do, what should, go to the politicians for the laws, go to the authorities for the other guidance, go to the schools for the policies, go to the church for prayer. This is what we are about. And so today, let us step up to that responsibility and to that calling and offer the prayers for those who have been so tragically lost. And may God continue to bless our country and have mercy on us, speaking repentance to the heart of those who are so overwhelmed by the forces of evil that they take actions like this. Please rise. Blessed is our God always, now and ever, into the ages of ages. Amen. Among the spirits of the righteous, perfected in faith, give rest, O Savior, to the souls of your servants. Bestow upon them that blessed life which is from you, O loving Lord. Within your peace, O Lord, where all our saints <clears throat> repose, give rest also to the souls of your servants, for you alone are immortal. <clears throat> Intercede with him for the salvation of the souls of your servant. Have mercy on us, O God, according to your great mercy. We pray to you, hear us, and have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. So again, we pray for the souls of the departed servants of God, those who senselessly lost their lives in the violence at Uvalde, in Buffalo, and other places throughout this country and this world, and for the forgiveness of their sins, voluntary and involuntary. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. May the Lord God place their souls with a righteous repose. Let us ask for the mercies of God, the kingdom of heaven, and the forgiveness of their sins. From Christ, our mortal King and God, to you, O Lord. Let us pray to the Lord, Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. O God of spirits and of all flesh, who have trampled upon death and abolished the power of the devil, giving life to your world, Give rest to the souls of your departments, those servants, those who have lost their lives in the violence at Uvalde, at, in Buffalo. Throughout this country on a daily basis and throughout your world, in a place of light, a place of repose, a place of refreshment, where there is no pain, sorrow, and suffering, as a good and loving God, forgive every sin they have committed in thought, word, or deed, for there is no one who lives in the sinless, you alone or without sin. Your righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and your word is truth. For you are the resurrection, the life, and the repose of your departed servants, Christ our God. Unto you we give glory together with your eternal Father and your all holy, good, and life-creating spirit, now and ever, into the ages of ages. Amen. You are the resurrection, the life, and the repose of your departed servants, Christ our God, and to you we give glory with your eternal Father and your all holy, good, and life giving spirit now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Glory to Christ our God, and I hope glory to you. May Christ, our true God, who rose from the dead as a mortal king, has authority over the living and the dead. May he have mercy in us and save us through the intercessions of his most holy and pure mother, the holy, glorious, and praiseworthy apostles, our venerable and God-bearing fathers, the holy, glorious forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, of his holy and righteous friend Lazarus, who lay in the grave four days, and of all the saints, may he establish the soul of his departed servants. In the dwelling place of the saints, give them rest in the bosom of Abraham, number them among the righteous, and have mercy in us and save us as a good and loving God. May your memory be eternal, dear brothers and sisters, you who are worthy of eternal blessedness and eternal memory. <clears throat> Together, please. Memory.
the dead by death, trampling down upon death, and to those in the tombs he has granted life. Truly the Lord is risen. Please never lose sight of the truth that whenever we are tempted to ask, in this situation or in any suffering in our own life, where is God? As the scriptures tell us, God is with us. And in fact, our God, the Lord Jesus Christ, fully God, fully man, the incarnate Lovos, came and suffered with us. He is a God who has suffered. He is a God that never leaves us in our pain and suffering. He is with us always.